Um, good morning, everyone. All right, you're awake and alive. I like to hear that. Uh, I have dressed down a little bit, but at the same time, I feel like I've dressed up a little bit. Uh, I'm not wearing my robe, but I am wearing my brand new Bullard Methodist shirt that uh, I had made with our logo on it. Uh, sometime in the near future, we plan on doing T-shirts uh, with our logo and name on it, and then uh, like the, the mission statement on the back of the shirt. We're going to get those at some point in the, in the future. But uh, if you want one of these, uh, the, the, we've already paid to have the logo and name digitized over at Simply Adorable, uh, which is across from the middle school. So if, and if, you want, if you have a polo shirt and you wanted to take it in, and get it made, uh, and just pay for whatever it costs to stitch it, uh, you can do that. So uh, or it doesn't have to be a polo, just whatever shirt that you want, that you could put this on. You're, anybody's welcome to go over and, uh, and take care of that. But at a later date, like I said, we'll have some, we'll take a sign up for t-shirts and get your sizes and all that, and we'll let you know how much that costs uh, when the time comes. Uh, if you would, be sure to grab your uh, pew pads on the end of each row. Make sure everybody on your row has a chance to fill those out so we have a registration of your attendance this morning. Sure would uh, appreciate you doing that. Announcement-wise, the first thing is not in the bulletin. If you signed up for our uh, Bible study, uh, the books mysteriously came in. Uh, and uh, they showed up in a Sunday school classroom. Uh, that, uh, that Venus or I did not have knowledge that they showed up. <laughs> so the books came, Venus, even while, while we were looking for them the whole time. And uh, so we've got them up here on the front row. And uh, uh, if you would like to pick yours up, th these are for folks who have signed up and uh, who are already a part of the class. We've, we've ordered just for those who signed up. So if you signed up for the class and are part of the class, then you can pick up your book, and it's uh, right over here on the front pew to my left, your right. So please be aware of that. Also, uh, today there is a very, 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 very brief uh, Board of Stewards meeting that's going to take place right after church today up front here uh, for all of our Board of Stewards folks that are available. Uh, every year we have to approve my uh, IRS documents, the, the pastor's uh, uh, health expense re reimbursement, the medical expense, re or not medical, the professional reimbursement, all that stuff has to be documented and, re and we need to have that as an official meeting. And uh, none of that's changing from last year, so uh, it's just a matter of us taking a vote for it. So if you can come, uh, please be with us here after the service. It'll take just a snap. Okay, uh, Brookdale Communion Ministry is taking place today at 2 p.m. We do this on every communion Sunday. We extend our communion table to the residents at Brook uh, Haven and or Brookdale, pardon me, South Senior Center. And if you would like to help out with that, uh, you can uh, either contact uh, Gloria Jones, or I'd say right now probably Lisa would be the person to contact. Gloria's a little busy with things with Jerry, but if you'd like to, to help out with that, either just being a, a warm body there to welcome people or help serve communion, if you'd like to do a devotional, help with music, talk to Lisa. She would love to, to have extra help on that. We have a bridal shower today for our own Katie Gage. Katie's wave, so wave at Katie in the back back there. She's getting married. We're excited for her and TJ. And, uh, and so there's a bridal shower today at 2 p.m. in Harper Hall, and there's more information about where they're registered in the bulletin. Prayer Partners continues, and we have a good core group of folks that are attending that. We are meeting now in Harper Hall uh, around the tables, and that's at 315 on Tuesday. So uh, please be sure to uh, join us. We'd love to have you. Now, there's two different ways we're doing, we do prayer around here. We have our email list that Catherine Bunce is in charge of. If you have a prayer request, you send that to Catherine first. And, uh, and she'll get it out. And what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever emails come through her email list and adding them to our, our group list that we have. So we have a two-page right now of uh, prayers, uh, just single-spaced uh, praying for folks. So, um, and, uh, you know, we can probably make that available in the future and just have it out here for anybody who wants to pick that up who isn't able to pray with us on, tu on Tuesdays. You can pray on your own leisure time. So um, uh, we'll do that in the, in the future. But... All right, uh, Potluck with a Purpose this Wednesday, 5.30, over in the Family Life Center. Uh, mission Barrel for March, we're collecting items for St. Paul's Mission. Uh, that would be new Tylenol, new Motrin, or new thermometers. I'm not going to retell that story from last week. Uh, upcoming Children's Ministry Date, the Easter Explosion, will be Saturday, April 8th. 
Uh, and um, what we're needing help with is filling the Easter eggs. I believe there should be bags out here with empty Easter eggs in it. If you'll take one of those bags, go buy a bag of candy, fill them up, bring them back next Sunday, uh, that will be great. I know we had some out. At, uh, I believe there's some out there. I didn't see them, but uh, I'll have to look and see. Are they over there, Mike? Yes, Mike says they are there ready for you to pick up. Don't all rush at once. We can do this as we leave, okay? All right, and then also uh, save the dates, June 26th through 29th for Stellar VBS. Y'all got that? All right, let's uh, share together in uh, reciting our mission statement so that we know we're all on the same page, all right? Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. Amen? Amen. One word of instruction, today is a communion Sunday. Everyone is welcome and invited to uh, participate in communion. Ushers will lead you by pew, and you'll be coming down the center aisle here, and you'll kneel at these rails, um, and you will be served at those uh, kneeling rails. If you can't kneel, that's fine. Just stand there, and we'll, be, we'll still be able to serve you as well. There is a plate down front here. This is for our Dollar Mission Club. Uh, it, no, you're not paying to take communion. This is if you feel, feel so led to give a dollar. It goes to mission organizations outside of our church uh, that we can help, that, that at least mission agencies that are serving uh, are those in need outside of our church. So uh, if you uh, would like to give towards that, you're welcome to, uh, to give towards that. All right, any other announcements? Anything I missed? If not, then let's stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Would you join me in our call to worship this morning? Welcome pilgrims on the way to the cross. We are here to follow. When God says go without telling us the destination. When rebirth is the impossible way forward. When we find ourselves in the in-between of where we've been and where we're going. Pilgrims on the way, let us worship God. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts for worship. <coughs>
please, as we sing Lift High the Cross. Come on down here, closer. Come on in, because I have something I'm going to show you. Did you get to pass that around? I have something here in the bag, and you might not even know what this is. <laughs> what do y'all think this is? A phone? Yeah, it is a phone. Now, we're used to phones looking like this, right? But this is a fun, old telephone. It's a real telephone. It really used to work, and it would work now if we hooked it up. Now, what, what are some of the things we've used a telephone for? We use it to call people. To call people, that's right. What would you do in an emergency? What number would you call? 911. Let me see what happens. 911. Hello? Yes, I need some urgent help. Yes, my husband has fallen and I think he broke his leg. Can you help me? What? You, you can't help right now? You're too busy. Well, I thought this was 911. You're not going to help me? Oh, dear. They're, they're too busy to answer the call. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? Well, our Bible verse today comes from the book of Mark. And it says this. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Did those people say we're too busy? Did the disciples say, nah, Jesus, we're not going to follow you. We're too busy. No. Nope. What did they do? They did. They dropped everything they were doing and they followed him. Did you know that Jesus calls you? You and 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 you. Jesus calls all of you. What do you think he calls you to do? To go preach. Are you going to be a preacher? That would be pretty awesome. Amen. What do you think? God calls you to do, um, Jesus calls you to do the right thing, right? So he calls you to tell the truth. He calls you to be kind to other people. 
he calls you to forgive others when they maybe have done something wrong or hurt you, right? And later in your life, he might call you to do something big like be a preacher. Or he might call you to do something big like be a teacher and share Jesus' love with your students. But always remember that he calls every single one of you. So I hope that you will follow him. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. And thank you that Jesus calls us to do the right thing and to follow him. Help us to do that each day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. and join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Glory be to the Father. remain standing with me as we sing Onward Christian Soldier. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of unwavering love, you have held nothing back in your love for us, not even your son. How we marvel at that kind of love and how we long to reflect a portion of that devotion back to you. As we dedicate our offerings to you, lead us away from our tendency to hold back and worry that there will not be enough. Help us to live as the people of love and abundance you have called us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen? Amen. The boss of uh, a big company called his employee on a Saturday because they were in crisis. The computers at work weren't working properly, and this is the fella that could fix the problem for them. When he dialed the employee's home phone number, he was greeted by a child who whispered, Hello? Big Boss was a little bit disturbed by the fact that he had to talk to a child. He, uh, he wanted to talk to his employee, and so he said, uh, 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 Son, is your daddy home? And the child said in a whisper, Yes. Well, uh, may I talk to him, asked the man. And the, to the boss's surprise, the small little voice whispered, No. He was a little bit taken back by that, and so he said, uh, well, is your mommy there? And, and the little boy said, yes. And, and well, let me talk to her. And, 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 and he, he, he said, no. Well, certainly this boy wasn't being left by himself. And so he said, is there anybody else there that, uh, that I could talk to besides you? And, he, and the little boy said, yes. And he's like, well, who, who? And he said, the policeman. Uh, boss was starting to get a little concerned now. This was one of his best employees, and now he's got the police at his house. What kind of person is he dealing with here? And, and, uh, and he said, well, well, let me talk to the policeman. He says, no, no, the policeman's busy talking to mommy and daddy and the fireman. The boss really got concerned at that point. He began to hear noises in the back of through the phone and, and said, uh, what is that noise? It sounds like a helicopter. He goes, yes, it's the helicopter. And the search team just arrived. Well, what in the world is going on there? He said, well, they're, they're searching. And he goes, well, what are they searching for? And the little boy goes, me. <laughs> huh? Neil, don't give me that wave off now. Is that a five or a ten? Is that? Oh, come on, Kelly. Is that when you did the thumbs up, is that plus one? <laughs> Now, that's uh, not the kind of phone call you want to make, not the kind of phone call you hope your child receives, but uh, it is a phone call nonetheless. And today, we're talking about calls, the wonderful children's uh, message there, Tammy, and, and, uh, but we're not talking about necessarily phone calls uh, as much as what we're talking about uh, religious calls, if you will, or spiritual calls, or, or calls from God. Now, this morning's scripture tells us about the call of Abram, who would later be known and more famously known as Abraham, the father of faith. And Abram's call is a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness and our need to trust him in this life. And in a few minutes, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that and his calling in specific and and, and talk a little bit more about what that uh, says and teaches us today. But before we do, I want us to kind of unpack a little bit uh, this whole idea of what is a call. But before we do, I need you to do something because uh, I need you to grab your seat belts on either side of you, okay? Grab your seat belts and, and, and buckle them up really good uh, because I'm, I'm fixing to let you drink from a fire hose for a few minutes. Is that okay? Can you do that? All right, here we go. Abraham's call was a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness to us and our need to trust God. But first, we've got to answer the question is, what is a call? You know, uh, the kids gave a very common answer. When, when someone talks about being called, uh, they usually are someone who's been called to go to seminary, called to be a full-time preacher, uh, and, and that genuinely is a, a true calling that happens in a person's life. I was called uh, when I was younger. I'm not going to get into the story of that, but, but, but I had this very, very real calling from God to go into full-time ministry. And when God calls somebody to that sort of thing, that's what we think about when we think about the word call. Someone who's called to a unique role within the church, uh, a specific role within the church, maybe even to full-time ministry, 
This is a person who preaches and teaches the word, provides pastoral counseling and care, administers the sacraments of the, of the Lord's Supper and, and baptism, and leads the church in, in worship and outreach. However, contrary to popular belief, I am not the only one called. That's what people think. They think, oh, preachers are called, pastors are called, even missionaries are called to full-time mission work around the world. But guess what? We're not the only ones that are called. Every single one of you, as a baptized believer in Jesus Christ, has your own calling to the work of God in His church and through His church. We talk about this when we uh, consider the, the biblical concept of the priesthood of all believers, uh, something that comes out of 1 Peter chapter 2. In verses uh, 5 through 9, this is what we read. It says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen people. He's talking to you guys now, okay? You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now this concept of the priesthood of all believers, something that we're all called to, this concept involves two very crucial Christian truths. The first of which is that all Christians have equal access to God. And secondly, that all Christians are equally called to serve Him. I want you to hear this. I don't want you to miss it. Say it with me, okay? Number one, all Christians have equal access to God. And number two, all Christians are equally called to serve Him. Now let's look at each of these really quickly. The, in, the, in the Old Testament, uh, there was only one person that may, was able to have uh, uh, close access to God. That was the, the high priest, and the high priest was the only person who was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. That center place, uh, in the beginning it was in the tabernacle, and then later on when they built the temple, they still had a Holy of Holies in the temple. Many of you have been reading about this, uh, and what, how the temple structure was in our, in our chronological reading through the Bible, but there was, a, there was a veil that separated the Holy of Holies where the presence of God dwelt, uh, from the common person and no one was allowed to enter there unless if they tried to they would be struck down dead uh, but only the high priest and only after the high priest had gone through several rituals uh, in order to be cleaned uh, and and, uh, and and so you know they even went so far as they tied a rope around the the high priest's ankle just in case he went in and had forgotten the, some of the purification rites or maybe anger God in some way or, or messed up or, or if he fell out dead or whatever, they could at least pull his body back because no one else was allowed to go in the Holy of Holies. But after Jesus' death, that changed. And that changed forever. In fact, we know that when Christ was on the cross, that at that moment of his death, it says that the veil in the temple that separated God from Everyone else was torn from top to bottom in some sort of a miraculous act of God, symbolizing in a very real and practical way that that barrier that kept people from being close to God was now being taken away, including the barrier of sin that was being forgiven through what Christ has done and the barrier of death, which is now going to be overcome through Jesus' resurrection. God was doing a new thing. And God was making a way so that everyone has equal access to God. You get the picture? You're a part of the royal priesthood. You have equal access to God. That's part one. But you also have something else. The First Peter passage also highlights that all believers are part of this spiritual house upon which we are all priests. We are members of the household. And as such, we each have a role to play. Now, Martin Luther, the famous German theologian and reformer, wrote extensively about the priesthood of all believers. And in one of his sermons, he compared the priesthood of believers to a choir. And he is quoted as saying, As every Christian is a priest, 
so also should he be a member of the choir. Yes, okay. Singing and making music before God. Now, I told Robert about this, and, and, and uh, um, I, I half expected him to have sign-up lists ready to go for all of y'all to sing in the choir. What I had to tell him, though, was that, you know, at face value, we misunderstand what, what Martin Luther was trying to say. Uh, it, it's actually something that's meant to be something more. Luther believed that e just as each member of the choir has a unique voice, altos, sopranos, where are sopranos? You got sopranos? All right. Where are our basses? We got basses? All right. Where are our baritones? What are y'all? Tenors. Sorry. Where are our tenors? Raise your hands. Okay. Sopr altos. Okay. See, we got all these different folks that sing in the choir. Just as each of them comes from, with their own giftings of voice, they blend together to make beautiful music. Another way of saying the same thing is an orchestra. Each of us plays a different instrument. Each of us has a different talent. Each of us has a different ability. But when we use them together, like they use their voices together, that we bring forth beautiful music for the kingdom of God. And the church is what the church is meant to be. In many ways, believers are called to serve God uh, as a member of God's house. And these, uh, these things that God calls us to depends upon the, the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God gives us. And some examples of the ways that believers are called to serve God, uh, we're called to serve God, some of us, by sharing the gospel. Some of us have real good, strong gifts of evangelism, and we can, we can, we can elaborate on, on what our faith is all about, and, and God calls us to, to do that. Have, you know, he's not here this weekend. Jim Gill, I tell you, that man is an evangelist. If I've ever seen one, he's inviting everybody and their brother and their cousins and their sister's mother to church. That's part of his gifting. He uses that as part of his kingdom work to serve God. Uh, believers serve God also by serving in the church. Uh, it could be singing in the choir. Uh, it, it could be uh, teaching a Sunday school class. In fact, Deirdre just told me this last week that uh, she's in need of teachers for the children's wing. Uh, they rotate around, and, and, but she needs somebody who's willing to step forward to use the gifts that God has given because we are called to serve God, and one of the ways we do that is in serving in the church. We have so many new folks coming to the church. We need a new adult Sunday school class. Who's going to teach it? We need to find some teachers that might want to rotate and help us to, to, to start a brand new Sunday school class and so forth. We serve God. We're sharing the gospel. We serve God by serving the church. People share, uh, serve God by using their gifts and talents, whether it be musical ability, singing the choir. Uh, we serve God by serving in our community, not just in our church, but in our community. We've got folks that are involved in Kiwanis. We've got folks that are involved in Rotary. We've got folks that serve at CASA. We've got folks that serve in various ways, going to Carter Blood Center and getting blood. These are all ways that we use the gifts that God has given us to serve others and be a blessing to them. And also, we all, every single one of us, serve God by practicing our own personal holiness, by living out the Christian life that we're called to, by being the Christians that we are as a witness to Jesus Christ. The ways believers are called are many and various, and they're tailored to the person's individual gifts and talents. But the important thing is, the important thing is that we first know that we're called to serve God and that we listen to Him when He calls us. Some of us don't listen very well, uh, and, and we may have these gifts and talents, but, but we don't always step forward and, uh, and use them as God has called us to, to do so. Now, let's look at Abram's story a little closer. Abram's calling teaches us two very important lessons about listening to God and about hearing his call and, and, uh, and, and doing what he's called us to do. And I just want to refresh us. Uh, real quick, I'm going to read through the four verses again just to refresh your mind about what we're talking about here in the call of Abram. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and all the people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, it says, as the Lord had told him. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. I mean, consider it. 
what was he dealing with? He, 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 he didn't say, hey, would you go across the street and help that person, you know, mow their yard? No. He said, leave your family, leave your uh, uh, country, leave everything you know. In other words, leave your comfort zone. We have a tendency as people to stay within what we know as comfortable. And God says, I've got work to do and I need you to do it. And it's going to require you to step out of your comfort zone in order to do that, that sort of thing. Sometimes uh, we've got to do what God calls us to do. And this brings us to the first point that, that I want to make. What we learn from Abram's call is that Abram's call was a call to leave everything behind. To leave everything behind. Go from your country, go from your people, go from your father's household to the land I will show you. And what did he do? Well, it says very clearly from verse 1 to verse 4, boom, he went. Abram went. Abram's call to leave everything behind was not just for him, but for us as well. We are called to leave behind our old selves. We are called to leave behind our selfishness. We are called to leave behind our bad attitudes. We are called to leave behind anything in our lives that does not reflect Jesus Christ. We're called to leave behind our hesitations. We're called to leave behind our fears. Anything that will keep us from serving God in the ways that he has gifted us and called us to serve him. Every single one of us is called. There are churches out there who think that it's this, the preacher's job to do these things. Gosh, that's why we pay them. You know, or the church staff. That's why we pay them. They need to do the work of ministry. Well, guess what? That's a completely non-biblical model. Yes, I have things to do. I have parts to play. The staff has things to do, and they have parts to play. But our job is to empower and equip you for the work of ministry so that you can live into your call as a priest in God's kingdom to do your part, to serve, to use your gifts. And it calls you to leave behind, to lay aside anything that would keep you from doing that. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus says, If anyone would come up after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now the saying must have confused the disciples because he had not yet gone to the cross. But Jesus knew that eventually he would, and they later on would look back upon this conversation and they would recall the words of Jesus, and it would make sense to them, and they would get the point. Soon they would remember that how the cross was an instrument of death, and carrying it required both sacrifice and surrender. Both sacrifice and surrender. In the same way, denying oneself means putting to death our desires and surrendering our, God, our lives for God's will and His use in His church, and in his kingdom, and in the world. This means that we must be willing to let go of things that hold us back. We must be willing to let go of things that keep us from, from following wherever it is that Christ leads us. It calls us to leave behind the idea that, oh, that's somebody else's job. And instead say, God, what's my job? How are you calling me to serve? Abraham's faith journey reminds us that, that obeying God's call requires sacrifice but at the same time what we must remember is that 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 we must be willing to trust in the promises of God in order to see these things fulfilled and as we know God not only guides us but he calls us to something greater and he does what he we what he needs to do in order that we might do it E. Stanley Jones was a prominent 20th century Methodist missionary and writer and for 50 years beginning in 1907 he was a Methodist missionary to India, and he is a, a, a great prolific writer, um, and uh, one of the things that he was uh, most known for saying is this quote here, where God guides, God provides. Jones believed that God actively is involved in the lives of his people, and that if God calls someone to go do something, then God will do everything to help that person to achieve that goal or to fulfill that purpose or to respond to that calling. He's not going to say, I call you out here to go teach a Sunday school class and then walk away and go, oh, let's see how this works out. No, God's going to provide what you need to be the person that you're called to be, to do the things that you're called to do. Jones believed that God's provision often comes in unexpected ways and that we must be open to receiving his guidance and blessing even in unexpected forms. 
He once wrote, The art of living consists in receiving God's gift with fresh and grateful heart, with a fresh and grateful heart, and then using them wisely and generously for his purposes. Overall, Jones believed that when we trust in God and follow his leading, we can have confidence that he will provide for us and guide us every step of the way. And this leads us to the second lesson we learn from Abram's calling. And the second lesson is this. Abram's call was a call to trust in God's promises. Abraham's call was a call to trust in God's promises. The story of Abraham's call is not just about Abraham's obedience, but it's also about God's faithfulness to Abraham to see his promises fulfilled in Abraham's life. If you look throughout the promises and then you look throughout the rest of the Old Testament, you see that every single one of those promises that he made to Abraham was fulfilled. Let's look at them briefly here. There was first the promise to make Abram a great nation. And as we know, Abraham, Abram's descendants uh, ended up uh, making their way through Joshua to, uh, to Egypt. And there in the land of Goshen that was provided for them, they flourished and grew and multiplied into a, to a large group of people, basically a nation at that point. And even as they left Egypt and God provided a way out of Egypt for them to lead through the plagues and, and Moses leading them, even in the wilderness, they grew and grew into a great nation. How big? Well, you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 37, and it gives us insight into how big the Israelite nation had become uh, in Egypt. It says in, the, that the, uh, in, in verse 37 of Exodus 12, the Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, and there were about 600,000 men on foot beside the women and children. Now, if they had, uh, for every man, they had a woman and maybe a couple of children, guess what? You're looking at a size of about 2 million people making their way, uh, being led by Moses. That, that just blows your mind. I promise to make you a great nation. Guess what? You're a great nation. Number two, God promised to bless Abram and to make his name great. And this promise was fulfilled later. Abram became Abraham. He became known as the father of the Israelites and later in the New Testament as the father of faith. In fact, we, we read about him in Hebrews in the, in the great hall of faith chapter. His name is mentioned there. His, all, his name is also mentioned in Romans chapter 4. When it ta Paul talks about how Abraham Abraham's faith in God's promises, he says uh, that Abraham did not waver through unbelief, uh, regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. The Bible is the most well-selling, uh, the best-selling book in, in history. And guess what? Abraham's name is prominent. I will make your name great. Here's, uh, uh, here's uh, a third one. God promised to bless those who bless Abraham and curse those who curse him. Now, this promise was fulfilled throughout Abraham's life, uh, but one story in particular is when uh, they're nearing Egypt and, and, uh, and during Abraham's time, and uh, uh, Abraham is Abram still at that time. His wife was Sarai. We later know her as Sarah. Uh, but when they got close to Egypt, Abram got concerned that maybe the, the Pharaoh or somebody might take a liking to his wife because she was beautiful. And so he told Sarai to, uh, to pretend to be his sister, that way they wouldn't kill him. He was trying to cover his own tracks, you know, kind of saving his own skin, if you will. And, uh, and so uh, that's exactly what happened. The Pharaoh sees her. She's beautiful. He says, bring her to my house. She's going to be one of my many wives. And, and uh, sure enough, God steps in. Uh, there's a, there is a uh, disease that is struck in with Pharaoh. Pharaoh realizes this is because of Abram lying to him. He brings Sarai back to him and says, uh, you need to go on your way. You need to get out of here. God interceded to, to protect and provide. I will bless those you bless. I will curse those you curse. Number four, God promised to give Abraham his descendants the land of Canaan. We know this ultimately happened as Moses led them through the wilderness. Joshua led them into the promised land. Number five, God promised all the earth's families would be blessed through Abraham's descendants, and this promise was filled through none other than Jesus Christ, a descendant of Abraham, who became the Savior of the world. Time and time again, we see in Scripture, God is faithful to His promises. And because of that, 
we can look at our own lives and we can look at the promises in the New Testament that God gives us uh, for, for, for salvation, for, for uh, um, finding rest and peace, for, for uh, 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 helping us to work to our good in the midst of struggling situations, to, to the uh, providing for our needs, to the uh, 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 finding uh, peace in the midst of even our darkest moments. Time and time again, God makes these promises to us over and over and over again. And we know they are true. Because we see them experienced in our lives, in the lives of our family, but also we see them having been fulfilled historically through our fathers and mothers of faith who have gone before us. God's faithfulness to Abraham, Abram proves to us that his promises are true and that he is trustworthy. And the story of Abram's calling reminds us that we must trust in these promises, have faith in God that he will provide, trust that he will provide for us what we need when he calls us to do something for him and like abram god calls us to trust in his promises and because of the example of god's promises to abram we can trust that his promises are true to us i want to challenge you this morning and maybe this is something you need to pray about when you come forward for communion in just a few minutes the challenge i want to leave you with today is this I challenge you to embrace your calling as part of the priesthood of all believers. As members of God's household, I want you to, to accept and, and, and celebrate and, and affirm in yourself that you have a calling. God has something for you to be doing for his kingdom in and through this church and in this community as a witness. Are you listening for the call? Are you too distracted to hear it? Have you even considered it in the first place? Maybe you have, and the calling is just to keep faithful and doing what you're already doing. But whatever it may be, this morning I pray that as you come forward for communion, you will come and kneel and say, God, how are you calling me to serve you? And then, once you do that, I want you to say, okay, Lord, let's go. And step forward and take steps to fulfill that calling. If you need help discerning that, if there's, maybe you need help finding direction with that, come talk to me. I'd love to sit down with you and maybe help, you, help point you in a direction of, of where it is that God may be calling you. But we folks need to listen first. Hear from God. And then respond as Abram did with a resounding yes. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's children said, amen. amen. This time I invite you to join me in our uh, invitation to Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to dwell in charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Because the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear, have mercy on us and forgive us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, pardon us of all that is past and grant that we may ever serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night in which Christ gave himself up, he was meeting with the disciples in the upper room and he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he shared it amongst his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this, all of you, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of salvation in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of salvation and the privilege of calling. You have called us to mission and ministry in and through this church, O Lord, and we pray that you would reveal to us how we may serve you best and bring glory to your name. We thank you, O Lord, that you paved a way, that you tore the curtain and made a way through Christ's sacrificial death so that we may enter into a saving relationship with you, that we are no longer separated from, our, from you by our sin or a veil or any other kind of barrier, but that we can enter into the throne room of grace boldly as your children who have been adopted by your shed blood. Pour out your spirit of the, on these gifts of bread and cup and allow them, O Lord, to be for us the body and blood of Christ. And by your spirit, O Lord, make us one in mission and ministry to all the world so that all the world may come to know the saving love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. This time I invite those who are going to be assisting to come forward in the serving of communion.
closing hymn today is Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. If God has moved in your heart today and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, we want to celebrate that with you today. So please come forward or talk to me after the service today. We can do that. If you've already done that and you're now ready to take a step of faith by becoming a member of Bullard Methodist Church, that's something we'd love to sit down with you and talk to you about, to talk to you about how you can get involved and, and get plugged in to answer any questions that you may have. So please come see me after the service or call me this week. Uh, let's stand together as we sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. As priests in the household of God, you each have equal access to God and an equal calling to serve Him. And so I pray that this week and in the time ahead, you will find that place of service, be it in prayer ministry, be it in Sunday school, be it in, in whatever else, helping out with Easter extravaganza, uh, serving your neighbor, however God calls you. Hear the call, listen for it, and respond with yes. Go forth in the power and strength that God gives you to be the children of God, to lead lives of faithfulness unto God and lives that celebrate God's faithfulness to you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all said together, amen. amen. Go in peace. Amen.